Hi, I'm Kirk Thibodeau with the USGS Hydrologic Instrumentation Facility. I'm the manager of the Hydraulics Laboratory, and today we're going to go over the procedures for maintenance on a AA meter as outlined in the attachments to OSW Memo 9906. First thing when you come in from the field and you want to do maintenance is you want to do a quick inspection of the meter and then take it apart, clean it, and do a detailed inspection. First thing you do is release the lifting nut, which is down here at the bottom of the meter. To release this nut, you want to hold the bucket wheels steady and release the nut. What you don't want to do is hold the nut and spin the bucket wheels. If you do this, if the shaft is tied against the cap on the contact chamber, you can bend that shaft. So you just go ahead and release the lifting nut. Okay, with the lifting nut all the way up, first thing you want to look for is, is the bucket wheel damaged? Well, you can go ahead and spin it. And what you want to do is you want to look at the frame of the bucket wheel. It should ride steady. This is a bad bucket wheel that we know is bad. So if uh, we zoom in, can see that the bucket wheel is, is wobbling. Okay, if you've got a wobbling bucket wheel, chances are nine times out of ten is going to be the frame of the bucket wheel that is bent. It could also be that the upper shaft is bent, and it could also mean that the lower bearing is worn. So we, we have a, uh, a wobbling bucket wheel here. So we want to check see if it's the shaft that's also bent. So we spin it and we take an object, usually a small screwdriver works just fine, and you go in without hitting the cups and go down and see if that upper section is wobbling. This one is wobbling a little bit, so that means that the shaft is bent. So we're going to have to replace the shaft. And I'm also looking down at the bottom to see if the bottom is wobbling. And I do the same thing, a marker and hold it to see if it's wobbling. I do not have any wobbling at the bottom, so the bottom bearing is probably fine. So we've done that. We know we've got wobble. Now I want to see if the, the uh, pentagear assembly is in good adjustment. Easy way to do that is just tip the meter back about 45 degrees. If the pentagear assembly is out of adjustment, the uh, bucket wheel will come to an abrupt halt. This one's actually pretty good. So we've got the meter assembly. We're going to go ahead and take the cap off. Never take the cap off with the lifting nut engaged. If you do that, again, bent shaft, and also you scar up the top of your, your cap. This cap, somebody has done that. If you look here at the cap, there's a scar on the thing where somebody took the cap off when the lifting nut was engaged. Okay, with the, the cap off, next thing you want to do is remove the contact chamber. You do that by loosening the holding screw. Lift straight up. Sometimes you may have to twist a little bit to get it to come out. Contact chamber's out. Next step is you want to remove the pivot. Just loosen up on the Pivot screw, set screw, and drop it out the bottom. You want to, at this point, you want to make sure that you hold on to your bucket wheel assembly and shaft, because if you drop it down at this point, you could possibly bend that shaft, which is something again you don't want to do. At this point, there is a hold here that you can use either a small screwdriver or I like to use a little Allen wrench, which is easier to hold, get it in the, the slot, and just twist loose. So you want to go ahead and inspect the bucket wheel for cracks, cracked solder, and also see if your cups are, are cracked. Now we know the frame on the bucket wheel is, is bent. 
So at this point, we probably want to replace the bucket wheel with one that's, that's good. Now, if the frame was not bent, as you see, the cups are kind of dinged up. You can repair some of these dings with a uh, bucket wheel reshaping tool, which is also available from the HIF. You can stretch the cups of the bucket wheel. If you do that, that means that the standard rating probably won't work for this meter anymore. So you want to take extreme care when you're using this item. You just want to use it to remove small dings in the meter. Okay, that one's removed. Now if the, the frame's bent like this one, you can pretty much go ahead and replace the, uh, the bucket wheel. And also, right here the solder is cracked. So if you've got cracked solder on your bucket wheel, you want to replace that bucket wheel. Okay, we're going to go ahead and replace the, uh, the bucket wheel. It's a half inch nut that sits holding the, uh, the bucket wheel down. Go ahead and loosen that up. We'll take that off. Okay. Bucket wheel that we're going to replace. is in the contact point where the cat whisker makes contact. You want to make sure that it's not gouged or scarred. You want a nice clean edge at this point. Okay, we know the shaft is bent, but we probably want to inspect it again to make, make sure. And an easy way to do that is find, find a flat surface that you can put it down on and roll it back and forth to see exactly where it's bent at. This one, I'm pretty sure, it's bent right here in the bearing surface. So this is the one that we saw that was, was wobbling, so it'll be replaced with a good one. So we want to go ahead and start cleaning it. Now if you can have uh, industrial wipes or something that's lint free, that's your best bet for doing any type of cleaning of a current meter. What I normally do is I take a small piece of it, single layer is best, I roll it over, then take a small Allen wrench and twist it to where that the end of the Allen wrench is completely coated with the white. Twist it down and I use this to go down into the bearing, lower bearing surface to clean it. I reach down and make sure that I catch all the way down at the very bottom and go ahead and wipe clean. I also come around make sure that I pick up all the extra oil and any gunk that might have built up down in there. You can use cotton swabs, but the problem with cotton swabs is if they're too fat, they don't get all the way down to the bottom and clean the actual bearing surface. So if you want to use cotton swabs, make sure that you pull some of the cotton away from the outer edge so it's small enough to get all the way down to the bottom. Take a pivot. It's easy enough. Just go ahead and wipe it clean. And you also want to inspect your pivot. This one I know is a good pivot because I, I set it up that way. Here's one that we pulled off of a meter that came through our lab. I don't know if we can get close at this point, but we will show you what it looks like close up. It's flat, and this one actually does have a burr on it, which you can't see, but you can feel with your fingernail. And also, if you have tender skin, usually on your wrist, if you rub it, you can feel that burr catching. So this one is actually a bad pivot. It's got a flat point, and it's got a burr. Then you have pivots like this one, which become magnetized. So when you take your pivot off, you take a paper clip and you see if it lifts that paper clip. 
that means that your pivot has become magnetized. Your pivot is stainless steel, but it's a grade of stainless that can be magnetized. So that's something you want to check. We found in our hydraulics laboratory that if a pivot is magnetized, it will actually reduce the performance of your current meter. So to demagnetize it, you want to take a commercial demagnetizer. You can find something like this at any hardware store. Um, the Office of Surface Water for the last three years, going all the way back to uh, fiscal year 2002, has been sending these demagnetizers to all field offices during the current meter exchange. So you take the demagnetizer, stick it in the demagnetizing section, and pull through. There it goes. It's no longer magnetized. So this pivot, if it were a good one, we could turn around and use it again if we needed to. So we've demagnetized the pivot. We've cleaned the bearing. Now we want to get into the contact chamber. The contact chamber, uh, you want to inspect it. If it's not too dirty, you can usually clean the bearing surfaces of the pentagear, one on each side, and also this upper lug bearing of all the uh, dirty oil. Again, I like something that fits in there nice and neat. Go in, kind of rub it, catch all the, uh, the excess oil and dirt. And this usually works good if the meter is not too dirty. If it is dirty, well, you can try spraying with a little WD-40, which is a good cleaner. Um, and if it's really dirty, you might want to invest in a, an ultrasonic cleaner. So you can stick it in usually upside down in the ultrasonic cleaner for a couple hours and it will clean most of the, the really nasty crud out. But if you use WD-40 or an ultrasonic cleaner, you want to make sure that it's completely dry before you reassemble your meter. Okay, as I'm looking in here, I'm also looking at the cat whiskers. I want to make sure that they're nice and clean and straight. Uh, if you use bowling cable uh, cat whiskers, they're really not approved anymore because they do give a dirty signal that is not very good for a, an electronic counter. Cat w for a headset, you might like them, but we don't recommend them. A couple of things we want to look at in the yoke. First is we want to look for the alignment. You've got the yoke alignment tool that you can purchase, again, from the uh, HIF warehouse if you don't have one. But you should have one in your office at this time. You want to go ahead and insert it in the top of the yoke, and it should fall straight in like that. You don't want to force it. If you go to put it in and it hits on the side and doesn't go all the way down, don't, don't press it in. All you're going to do is scar up the bottom section of your, uh, your yoke. So when the alignment tool is in, it should fall straight in fairly easy. And when it's in, the bottom here should have no gap, and the top should have no gap. If you find the yoke is out of alignment, you can do some minor ali alignments, realignments. Uh, if you've got a, a good vise that you can hold the back end, then a rubber hammer to knock the different sections of the yoke into alignment. You don't want to grab with a pair of pliers and twist because you will break it. It's a uh, it's brass underneath the chrome. And with the alignment checked, I always also look down here in the back where the tail fin's attached. What we want to look for is is there any wallowing out of this hole? Because a lot of times you get older yokes that they've crank down on this set screw with a screwdriver, it starts to elongate. And when that happens, that means that that meter no longer sits straight and plumb off of your waiting rod. It will actually cause it to start dropping down. So it means you're, you have a meter that no longer aligns correctly when it's attached to your waiting rod. Okay, we've 
done the inspection of the meter, we're going to go ahead and start reassembling the meter. Take your uh, hub assembly and your bucket wheel. You noticed on your hub assembly, there's a little set key. That key fits into a groove that's into the, uh, the bucket wheel. Assemble it, just slip it in, get the key inside the groove, and make sure that the numbers that are stamped on the frame of the uh, bucket wheel are always on the top side. Next you take your, uh, your hub assembly nut and go ahead and put it on. Some of these nuts have a machine side that is flat, has one flat side and then one uh, side that is slightly sloped. If you have a flat sided nut, the flat side must go against the bucket wheel. Half inch socket. You just want to snug it down. You don't want to tighten it too tight, but you also want to make sure it doesn't come loose. Now, at this point is where I usually put meter oil inside the lower bearing. You do not want to take a pivot and dip it in your meter oil and then stick it in your meter. That puts too much oil on that that the uh, bearing surface. Now I'll explain why you don't want that in a little bit. So what we do is we take a paper clip, straighten it out, reach into the meter oil, we just get one drop, see how it's accumulating on the bottom, and then we just go ahead and put that right in the center of the bearing. That's all you need because the bearing Bearing surface only makes contact with one small point of your pivot, so you don't need a lot of oil in there. Take your yoke and cradle it so that you don't uh, twist anything. Go ahead and screw in your shaft. And again, it's another one you want to go ahead and snug up. Not too tight, because somewhere along the way you're going to have to take it apart again. Okay, go ahead and put your shaft, your, uh, your pivot in. Now, if you haven't made any adjustments, you haven't replaced anything up in here, you don't have to worry about your shaft, your uh, pivot sticking too far. But because I've replaced the shaft, there's a possibility my pivot might be out of adjustment. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and take the, the adjusting nut loose, and just pull that pivot out as far as I can to make sure that my shaft is not sticking too far up when I put the uh, cat whisker chamber on. Can move that out the way. Okay. Now I've got the contact chamber. I'm going to go ahead and slip it on. And when you're slipping it on, it should fall fairly easily down. If it doesn't, go ahead and rotate the bucket wheels a little bit to get that Acme gear to uh, engage correctly. And the alignment, if you have a uh, current meter like this one that has two marks etched on it, one on the yoke and one on the contact chamber, the correct alignment is to have both lines lined up. Tighten down. Now, if you don't have these marks, the correct alignment for the contact chamber is to split the difference between your single count lug and your pentacount count lug so that it splits the difference in the yoke. Now we want to put some oil up in the contact chamber area. Again, I use a paper clip. There's three places 
that you oil on a contact chamber. One is the lug bearing right on the side of the shaft at the top. One is the pinna gear. A little drop on each side of that, that gear. Then one is right on the top of the shaft because that's actually a bearing surface. Okay. I'm going to take the contact chamber. I'm going to go ahead and screw it on. If you notice, I've got the current meter rotating, the bucket wheel rotating as I pull down on the, the cap. The reason I'm doing this is I want to make sure that as I'm tightening down on the cap, the shaft is not sticking up too far. Because if I start tightening down on the cap and the bucket wheel comes to an abrupt stop, that means the, the uh, shaft is sticking too far up. And if I bear down tightening on the cap, I would bend that, that shaft. Okay, I've now got everything assembled. I want to go ahead and adjust the uh, pivot to the correct position. To do that, I've got to pivot in, back up on the adjusting nut, loosen up on the set screw, push it all the way down to where there's no play in the assembly, tighten down, tighten the nut. Now at this point, what I want to do is I want to slightly loosen up on this screw that's holding the pivot in just enough so that I, as I rotate the adjusting nut, tightening it up, it'll pull the shaft back just a little bit, but not allow it to rotate. So I want to rotate this nut one quarter turn, tighten down on this set screw to hold it while I come back and tighten on the set screw that holds the adjusting nut in its correct position. That's tight. I'll go ahead and make sure everything is snug. And that gives me the correct play. One quarter turn adjustment on the set screw. Okay, I've got everything together. Now I want to go ahead and do a spin test, a timed spin test on this current meter. When you do a timed spin test, what you have to do is make sure that the meter is level, both in the horizontal and also in the vertical. So the one thing that I see a lot is people go ahead and stick to the tail fin zone and go ahead and do a spin test. That's not the correct way. If you look, you know, I've got a little fisheye level here. You might want to invest in one. Again, the you can either get them at a local hardware store or the HIF also sells them. Put it on the top and you want this meter completely level when you go to do a time spin test. As I'm looking at this thing to get it level, see the tail has to come up at least a quarter of an inch. You can do a time spin test with the tail fin zone, but you want to make sure that the meter is level when you do the, that, that spin test. If you're going to be doing a lot of spin tests and you've got somebody in the office that does, can do machine work, I've got my own spin test mount that I use. Okay, when I stick a meter on, I know that if I level the base and I stick the uh, fisheye level on the top of the meter, it's level. So when it's level, then I can do a, a time spin test. Time spin test, you go ahead and let it go, and okay, I started my timer. Usually for a double-A meter, you want minimum spin time is going to be two minutes. Anything less than two minutes means you got to check your uh, adjustments, and if all your adjustments are okay, 
everything's um, adjusted correctly and lubricated correctly and you still don't get two minutes, it means your lower bearing is worn and it's time to replace your hub assembly. The hub assembly is this assembly here which includes the uh, locking nut, the bearing carrier, your lifting nut, and inside is the bearing. You cannot buy just replacement bearing. You've got to buy the entire assembly. You've got your current meter spinning. Should go at least two minutes. Uh, you want to try and get as close to four minutes or above as you can. Okay, we're going to go, go ahead and assume that it's, it's running for over two minutes. Let's stop the timer here. And as it slows down, you want it to come down to a slow, gradual stop. You don't want it to kind of bind and stop abruptly. Okay, that's good enough. We'll go ahead and take that out. For a standard AA, you've got two, two cat whiskers. You've got the single count at the top, and way down at the bottom is your Pentagear cat whisker. When adjusting your, your cat whisker, the pentagear, you want to get a good, even contact on both sides of that pentagear. There are two lobes on the pentagear. So you want to make sure you get good contact with both of them. Most of them, they are balanced to where that you get the same signal both on both sides. Some of them aren't exactly balanced. So you want to get an average contact of both lobes to where you get a full rotation of your bucket wheel contact. That's usually a good contact for any counting device. Your single count cat whisker, you want to go ahead and make sure that it makes contact for about a bucket wheel rotation of one cup from beginning to end of your cup. That'll give you a good contact in a electronic counter and it should give you a good good contact in your headphones. Okay. We're just about done with a standard AA meter. Last thing you want to do is your lifting nut. Again, do not hold that lifting nut and twirl that bucket wheel. Again, as I said way at the beginning, when you do that, you go ahead and you jam everything up at the top and you can bend that shaft. And it also scars up that cap pretty bad. That cap is a bearing surface. That's part of your meter's bearing, so you need to keep it as scar free as possible. And in addition, we have gotten meters in the lab that this locking nut is so tight we've had to use pliers to pull them loose. Please don't do that that you don't have to replace a meter and we don't have to use a pair of pliers to take it loose. Now we're going to touch bases with a mag head AA meter. The only difference is you replace the contact chamber in the shaft with a magnetic contact chamber which has a reed switch underneath the, uh, the lug nut. and a standard and the shaft has a magnet on it. There's only two things that can go wrong with one of these counting heads. One is the magnet gets weak on the shaft and the way to check it out, again paper clip, just touch down on it, if it picks it up, it's a good magnet. That means that's not your problem. If it kind of picks it and it's barely holding on, you might want to think about replacing the shaft. Unfortunately, you can't replace just a magnet. You've got to buy a new shaft. So if your shaft is good, your problem is inside the contact chamber with the, the switch. At that point, go ahead and remove the boss at the top. Now, it doesn't matter if your insulator comes with it or not. You pull it out, watch your spring, and inside, 
there's a small reed switch. Now, if your reed switch is burnt or it's broken, you can buy a replacement from the HIF. They're a standard stock item. You want to go ahead and inspect your, uh, your reed switch because if you have corrosion, especially down here on the bottom section that was down inside the contact chamber, means moisture has gotten into here and it's corroded and you've got to clean down in there before you can put your new reed switch. The best thing we found in the lab is you just take a paper clip, the rougher the better on the end, and you just stick it down in there and rub it around and get all of that corrosion out. Once that's out, you take your new reed switch. It doesn't matter which way it goes. We like to always put the reed switch in so that the short lead is at the bottom. We drop it in top of the cap. It'll usually stick up just a little bit. Spring that also comes with your replacement. You take it drop it on top, the lead on top. Then on your boss there's a small gap, small hole that that spring goes up in and just tighten it down, snug it down. That's the maintenance on a mag head. Now for cleaning again, you know, you clean your bearing surface on the inside the same as you clean your lower pivot bearing on the meter. Just get something down in there, clean it out, and then you just clean the ball bearing on the top. You always want to use the oil that is sold by the HIF. This is not a sales plug for the HIF. This is because the oil that's sold by the HIF has been researched and they found an oil that's a lightweight machine oil that does not emulsify in water very easily. So it's one that's been investigated and we know the performance characteristics of this oil. If you use a vegetable-based oil like 3-1 oil, you've got big problems because that hits water, it emulsifies, it gets gummy real quick, and that's going to slow down and impede the performance of your meter. Have you ever taken a meter apart and saw white, gunky stuff in it? That's emulsified oil. You, you want to try and uh, keep away from that as much as possible. And another type of lubricant you do not want to use is a silicon-based lubricant or grease or oil. What happens there is, yeah, it will not emulsify, but it also attracts sediment. And that will scour your bearing and your pivot prematurely. So you're just destroying your meter if you use that, that type of oil. So go ahead and use what the HIF sells. It's been tested. We know it works. So you want to go ahead and use that. So that wraps up the meter maintenance. So let's see uh, if you can go out and clean your meters and get them to last for 100 years. Thank you.